Hey everybody, this is Jurius Doctor, and we're back again with a third video in the ship fitting series. We're going to be looking at fitting tools available outside the game. Now, one of the first things that I need to talk about is the fact that um, I need to make a disclaimer, and I'm making this my general boilerplate dis disclaimer for this whole video. This is not a video about which modules or fits you should use. This is not a video where I'm going to tell you which tool to use. I'm just presenting you with a few options. And this video looks at one tool in particular in a little bit of greater detail for your understanding, but these same principles are valid across all the different tools. This is also not an official endorsement of any particular tool or methodology for fitting, and this is not a sponsored video. I'm not getting paid to say this to you, nor do I endorse the use of fits from any public sites, even my own fits. That said, happy fitting. So the first thing to understand is that there are different fitting tools available. The first and probably the most heavily used is the Python Fitting Assistant, also called PyFA. It's available just by searching PyFA in Google. The very first hit that comes back is the GitHub page where the releases are posted. So whenever the uh, program is updated, you'll find new versions there. And the program will also prompt you on start if you want to download the latest version. Keeping this up to date is um, very important because as the game updates, uh, new features and new ships are released, uh, stats change, and so on. The developers of PyFA are very, very good about keeping it up to date. Then there's also Osmium. Osmium is a website. I'll provide a link down in the description. It is a web-based tool, uh, part of the Osmium website. It runs in browser. It works best in Chrome, and it's available only when you're online. Uh, it's also a site for sharing and publishing fits publicly. Uh, again, I don't recommend the use of public fits. I recommend talking to your fleet commanders and your leadership in your corporation. If you're not in a corporation, then you can risk these fits, but I definitely recommend talking to more senior players or reaching out to people for help. Now, tools. Let's talk about how fitting tools work. And these same principles apply to fitting in the game, but it's important to understand how they apply here. So we're looking at PyFA, again, because it's the most popularly used. When you're looking at the fitting window, there's a search field to search for modules, rigs, and ship hulls. The market tab shows you the available modules. The fittings tab lets you search for search or uh, fit hulls that you want to be able to put fittings onto. The search field is the same in both of those tabs, but the results below will change. In the market tab, you can browse or filter for your desired results of modules and rigs by category type and rarity. There's checkboxes at the bottom to disable or enable searching for faction or complex or officer fits if you've got all kinds of extra money to throw at your fitting. And the main window is where you'll add modules to the ship that you are fitting. In this case, I have a, an example of retribution fit. And at the bottom, you have tabs for your cargo bay, your drone bay, fighters if you're flying a carrier or a supercarrier, um, implants, boosters, and so on. So these are advanced concepts in the bottom there. We won't talk about implants or boosters, uh, command boosts, or anything in this video. This is just kind of an orientation of what you're looking at on the screen when you use these tools. Now, when it comes to reading and modifying the results, the main screen is going to show you some basic information, and I'm going to break it down for you here column by column. So here, using that same general retribution fit, you have power grid and CPU usage are your first two columns. Your capacitor use, when those are active, is the battery column here. And one thing I forgot to highlight is the very, very first column, far to the left, uh, check mark indicates that the module is considered active. If it's disabled, it will be a red X. The range of the module, if it applies, and the modifier column. Now this column represents the modifier change statistic. So um, it is respective to the category of module that's currently fit. So in this example, it applies to tracking speed for the turrets, warp core disruption amount for the warp disruptor, and energy weapon DPS boost from the heat sinks but this will change fitting by fitting. So this is sort of a um, utility column. It's good to know what kind of benefits you're getting from the modules you're fitting. Then there's a cost column to show you the approximate cost in real time uh, from ESI pull um, to show uh, 
what the relative cost of these will be in primary markets averaged across all of EVE. And then there's a charge column that indicates the ammunition consumable or modules currently loaded with scripts. Now, in the case of Tech2 mining lasers for miners, this is where you would see which mining crystal is currently loaded and how many charges it takes to load a, a single charge of ammunition or missiles or whatever the case may be. Now, moving on, it's also really important to understand the statistics sidebar. Now, this sidebar has a particular format and layout in PIFA. It will look different in Osmium, but the general um, layout is more or less the same as what you see in game when you're looking at the fitting of a particular ship with a little bit more detail. You get to see which level of skill training is reflected for the fit. In PIFA, you have the ability to choose whether you're looking at the fitting for a specific named character by importing your characters through EASY or ESI. For a beginning character, so you can select an alpha or omega character, uh, and you can look at the basic starting alpha skill sets. If you are lacking any of the skills required to fit a module that you've put on the ship, the skill book in the top right corner will change from green to red. Mousing over it will tell you which skills you're missing and what level. And by default, you'll want to set that to all five so you can see what the impact is for a fully skilled character. This is the maximum potential of the fit and this is generally used as the benchmark. Now, CPU and power grid consumption are shown here uh, as a relative percentage against a, a green background here. Um, so you can see if you're running out of fitting room as you fit objects into the ship. And you can see the drone capacity and bandwidth. Now that changes to cargo capacity if you are flying a ship that doesn't actively have the ability to fit drones. You have ship resistances and armor or shield profile, which shows you relative resistances at each level, shield, armor, and hull, and your uh, resistance against certain charges. Now, passive and active recharge or repair of protection systems, your recharge rates uh, will change depending on whether or not you're actually fitting any shield boosters, armor repair units, and whether or not they're active. Total firepower in terms of both volley and damage per second. And you can also show um, how much of that damage comes from your drones if you're using them. Clicking the icon of the turret to the right changes those results to mining yield so that miners can use this information window to determine how effective their mining fits are. It will also show remote reps and capacitor use. And capacitor stability is not necessarily the goal. A lot of people get really confused by this early in the game. Um, some ships, the goal, predominantly in PvE, is going to, to go for cap stability or to have some degree of cap stability built in. Some ships, um, cap stability is built in for strategic or tactical reasons, but in most PvP cases, having a ship be cap stable isn't necessarily the goal and, and typically can be uh, un invaluable um, uh, in some cases, but largely it's a hindrance because you're, you're fitting modules or fitting with a strategy to aim for cap stability instead of aiming for maximum damage output or aiming for whatever the tactical advantages of the ship that you're flying. This is why it's important to have experience when fitting for fleet purposes and why you should always rely upon the experience of senior players, your fleet commanders, and your alliance or corporation leadership to build fits for fleet use um, because they will understand the application of that doctrine against the enemies that you're encountering. And this is why it's also very, very common in corporation and alliances when you're engaged in fleet battle for you to switch doctrines in the middle of a battle. You'll also see the targeting and sensor profile here and the average fitting cost for the ship that you have assembled. This doesn't necessarily reflect the exact prices you'll pay in game. It's highly dependent on where you buy your modules in your ship but you can typically load it out for about this price. Now, what the fitting tools actually output? Well, you have this fitting setup and you have the ability to, by pressing Control C or choosing Copy, to select a format for your output. 
EFT stands for E-Fitting Tool, which is one of the earliest fitting tools created outside of the game. The format's been adopted by everybody else, but the EFT tool is no longer in active production and it's no longer updated. Other options are avail available here for players who need to take advantage of them, but those are predominantly advanced concepts I'm not going to cover in this video. What you actually get as an output is a text format, and this is what actually gets copied into the game. Now, how you import this into the game is that you go into your game, you go to the Neocom, and you open Fitting Management, and then you click Import from Clipboard after you've copied it from PIFA or whatever fitting tool you've used. If you're using Osmium, you can copy, there's a button to copy to EFT format directly in the browser. Once you do, the game will then show you the fitting demonstrated here on the right hand side with a fit from a previous video. And you'll be able to view that fitting simulated against a ship, as you can see here with that same ship. For more information, you can go to the official dev blog from the release of Oceanus. Link is provided here in the video. Now, people will want to know, where can I find fits? And again, per my earlier disclaimer, I don't support the use of public fits because there's a lot of trolls out there who'll put really crappy fits out in the hope that new bros who don't know any better will use them. Um, so, you know, take this with a grain of salt. But you can browse public work uh, fittings on Eve Workbench. It's a uh, public site where people can share fittings that they've created and you can browse or search them and you can filter them based on whether they're available to alphas or alpha and omega or only omega. There's also Osmium, again, a site where you can create fits but also where you can share them. And of course, there's the Eve University Wiki. Now, out of these three, if I was going to give an endorsement to any of them for new players. I would say for starting ships and tier one vessels, the Eve University Wiki isn't so bad, but again, that's not an official endorsement. It's just that it's probably the least terrible of what's available. Thanks everybody. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please feel, feel free to throw them in the comment section below. Give me a thumbs up if you liked this video and feel free to recommend me to your friends. Um, the next video will cover uh, additional options and advanced concepts will be video five in this series, closing out the series. I hope you are looking forward to the other uh, tips and tricks for new bros videos that I will be releasing. Uh, the next couple up will be videos covering a review of the history of Eve since 2014 for all those new bros and old bros returning to the game. Talk to you next time.